Hello and welcome to Watching the Tudors. I'm Heather. And I'm Jonathan. And this is the show where we watch the Tudors and talk about what was real and what wasn't and the story behind the drama. And so I'm Heather and I have another podcast, the Renaissance English History Podcast. And I thought that it would be fun to go back and watch the Tudors and see kind of what was true and what wasn't and what was dramatic and what was just totally made up. I thought I would play the part of the history novice, which works well because I (laughs) am a history novice. Um, And I thought this would be a a fun way to sort of learn about history by watching a a television show. And you're really getting into it. Like every episode you comment on. Yeah, I'm getting more and more into this whole thing. (laughs) It's uh, you can see why it's popular. It's it's riveting. Riveting. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so this is episode nine of season one. Look to God first. And just the regular, usual spoiler alert. Oh, two things. First, if you like this show, please leave us a rating on iTunes. It's a really important way that you can help us go higher in the rankings and everything like that. It's a big way you can support the show. And second, if you want to learn more about us and find out more about my other podcast and just who we are, you can go to watchingthetutors.com. And there's lots of information there. And you can also like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash watching the tutors. So regular spoiler alert. This, um, when we talk about stuff here, we're actually talking about what happened in the episode. And then second, kind of your regular. Yeah. Just in like a general, more broad, um, spoiler alert that, you know, we're going to talk about things that happen sort of in the future, um, based on where we are in the episode. So, you know, don't be too upset if you hear something and think, oh, no, I didn't know that. So um, there you go. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard when you talk about things in history. Yeah, in history, to like, like, yeah. You kind of know what Leave happened. out <laughs> other so. parts of history because it's all related. Yeah. yeah. So in this episode, um, Henry gets really pissed off because he finds <laughs> out that the court is not going to rule on his... Yeah, and they're just not going to rule, so he's really upset. He's really it's, ticked off about it. I think he's more upset than if they just said, no, you can't get it. It's yeah, just he's more... He's like the tired more of the waiting. postponement. He hates waiting. And looking bad in front of his, his girlfriend. Yeah. She's like, you're the king. I thought you were the king. Mm-hmm. Why can't you get this done? He's like, oh, well, i got to wait longer because the Pope says The Pope says, so. says I have to come to Rome and... Blah. And um, there's a new there's a new ambassador from the emperor who is going to help Catherine of Aragon. She's happy about that, but she's sad to see her other one leave. And what else happened in this episode? Cardinal Woolsey has his big downfall. It's starting to from go Grace. down. Margaret died. Yeah, the Margaret who was the Mary. Yeah, it dies. Yeah. So we can have stop having that conversation altogether yep. now. Yeah. And um, yeah, those are the highlights. So you want to jump right into your questions? Let's get into my questions. Let's do it. Yes. How many do you have? Do you have a lot? No, I don't have many okay, questions. Cool. Like I'm, I'm starting to kind of. You just start to like get in. I get a grant. You know, I don't have to ask so many context questions. Right. And. Um, I get you. Yeah. I feel like I might be missing stuff now because I'm sort of into it. Well, that's okay because people who listen along with you. Yeah. We're all growing together. Right. So. <laughs> You're like yes. the journey, sharing the journey of history. <laughs> so to me, that's just like the trial. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, it's not really a question, but it, it just seemed like really staged. Like Oh, you think? I mean, like I, I wrote down the most staged trial ever. Like Yeah. Like the guys, like yeah, we have the sheets. We have the bloody sheets. We're gonna dig them out of the yeah. basement. Like yeah, and this was uh, in the context of talking about whether or not Catherine was a virgin. Exactly, yes. and like from like from how many years ago? I mean, to like twenty seven, twenty eight years ago. Gosh, it's so silly. Yeah, and then in comes what Anthony Willoughby. Yeah, what. What's that guy's deal? Well, he was a steward. So you remember how we saw in the earlier episode where Margaret, who's really Mary, married the King of Portugal, who's really France, and they had the big ceremony where they put her to bed? Yeah. So they would have ceremonies like that. And that was because a big part of the marriage was to make sure that it was consummated. So you would publicly go to bed. Like Mm -hmm. a marriage wasn't officially seen as valid until it was consummated. 
So you would have this big public ceremony where you went to bed. And actually, in the morning, a lot of times you would hang out the bloody sheets so everybody knew that it was consummated. Uh So Anthony Willoughby was one of the people who was there putting Arthur and Catherine to bed. And he would have been younger, like one of Arthur's, you know, Arthur's age. Yeah. Um, So now he is older. And he's saying... he remembered all those good quotes. Yep, he sure did. And those quotes were, were... yeah. Like, this is a, this, uh, Anthony Willoughby is a real person who really gave this testimony yes. in this trial. And Prince Arthur really supposedly said that stuff. Wow. I'm so thirsty as I've been to Spain last night. Uh huh. I quite enjoy the pastime of having a wife. Good times. Yeah, but you know, it's funny because I was thinking that I think those quotes, <laughs> oh, this goes kind of into the, question whether she was a virgin or not but um you know prince arthur was quite sick he died within just a few months and so i don't know that he would have been able to and it seems as if those kinds of quotes uh, you might have more of an insight into this having been a teenage boy but to me when i hear quotes like that i think oh he's like showing off to exactly make it i seem. think that's the person who has not had sex <laughs> right yeah 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 so i mean i think she was actually a virgin when she married Henry for other reasons as well. But yeah. those quotes don't really do much no, to they help. they don't really support the, the cause of... Yeah. 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 But they didn't... They weren't so into pop psychology at that time, I guess. Yeah, no. <laughs> so next, the queen is talking with Wolsey, and just she is not having any of his, no. his stuff. No, I mean, she's, she's over it. Yeah, she's just totally over it. I just... I just love her, you know, standing up for what she sees is right and just taking it, taking it to him. So that's cool. Yeah, she really, she really was quite stubborn and bullheaded. So next, I'm wondering about Cromwell. Like, let's talk I'm, about Cromwell. Yeah, I'm just, wh- where is his loyalty? Like, because he's, so let me think. So he's Protestant. So he's not like on the, on the Pope side necessarily. Right. So I guess he's sort of, and he's on also the king's closeted side. Protestant. Yeah. So he can't seem too rabid against it or whatever. Yeah. Or against the Pope. But like, where, where is he? Is he fighting? Is he on the king's side? Is is he like? I think he's on Cromwell's side. No, Cromwell. Is yeah, on, I think he's on Cromwell's side. Oh, okay. So Cromwell's going for Cromwell. It doesn't yes. really. If he gets a divorce, if he doesn't, whatever, yeah. like he's kind of. And going for the him. other thing is, I mean, I think. And what about with that, Woolsey? Like, is he kind of going against Woolsey to? No, to get- he was loyal to Woolsey. He was very. He was a you know a very close friend of Woolsey's, yeah. and he was loyal to him. I think until the very end, when he could see that. Yeah, till, there was till it was like dangerous to even be close to him. And at that point, he thought, "All right, you know, I'm going to do what I can do," but I don't think that he particularly ever. I mean, in in several in less than a decade he would be also the one who orchestrated Anne Boleyn's downfall and you know yeah, so I think he wasn't really on anyone's side like and in fact to anyone per se you know in her historical fiction that I've talked about before Hillary mm-hmm. Mantel makes a point of showing that I think they show it in this they have a a mask that really happened to celebrate the downfall of Woolsey and all of the the young Boleyn son and all of the like mm-hmm. Brandon and all those, all those young folks. guys, they dress up as the Cardinal and like pretend that the devils come to get him. And like, they have this mask about it and Cromwell saw that. And I think at that point he said, all right, I'm going to do whatever I can do to bring you guys. I'm going to get he, all of these people. Like he really was just like, screw all of you. Like you have no idea what a good person you had and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but he kept it, you know, inside. Yeah, he, just um, did his thing. he just did his thing and kept his head down and tried to, do what he could Man, that'd be rough to just to see your like you know if, your mentor. I mean, it, yeah if he looked you know however he looked at him like mentor friend i mean to see like the conspiring against you know what seems you know i mean not from what i know of nine episodes of a television show 500 years ago yeah like it seemed like woolsey wasn't a bad dude to have doing what he was doing no i mean he was you know, I mean, he seemed to be out for himself as well, but he he didn't seem he seemed like he would have been good if if they didn't if everyone wasn't cons- conspiring against him. Yeah, and you know, I heard somebody say once, you know, who was more imp- important, Woolsey or Henry? 
like in the early part of Henry's yeah, reign. Yeah. And the person said, um, they were, they, you couldn't have had one without the other. Yeah. You yeah. couldn't, Henry couldn't have become who Henry yeah. was without and Wolsey. Wolsey, and Wolsey Wol- needed Henry to become. Yeah. I mean, like, if he would have had a strong king that didn't listen to anyone, like he yeah. wouldn't have had room for it. And, yeah. And if Henry yeah. would have been interested in bureaucracy and interested mm-hmm. in all that kind of stuff, then yeah. he wouldn't have had a need for Wolsey. And, um, mm. you know, they really needed each other, mm-hmm. but, um, and and so yeah, I it, right. I think it was hard for Cromwell to see that, but then sure. he reached a point where he was like, all right, I'm I'm not going to yeah, die. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to get my head chopped off. That won't help anything. Of course, he does get his head chopped off well, later. Not then. No, not then. So next, I wonder. So the next scene, they're at, they're at the bar. Like it's just that mm-hmm. bar scene where they're yeah. all joking about what um, Willoughby had yes. said. And I get. I'm just curious, like. Like that was public knowledge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's word still got around, even though they didn't have television yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I mean, there was hundreds of people in the court that would have talked about it and yeah. the servants, and they just and, would have gotten out and just yeah. gone and told every little corner. And yeah, it was it was big yeah. gossip. And I can just imagine it getting a ele- like a ele- more elaborated. Yeah, every telling. Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> so so Henry was kind of well, not not like he was a laughing stock, but I mean. Yeah, he must not have liked. He must not have liked this. No. Just like it makes him look weak. Yeah, you know I mean, he doesn't. Seem, he doesn't seem like he's the type of guy who who enjoys looking weak. No, he really saw himself as this really wonderful Renaissance prince who was beloved by his people, and you know, it's pretty. Kind of couldn't do wrong. Yeah, and it's thing. pretty soon after this when he starts to become the kind of tyrant that kind we of now know. But yeah. yeah, and it's just sad to see that kind of transition because when he, when he was when he first became king in 1509, like people were so excited about him and he was going to be this great prince that was, you know, going to make England yeah. so great and blah 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 blah. And it's just like he's turning into some kind of a crazy man. I didn't even know he was looked at as a tyrant or whatever. Oh, uh, well, my yeah. my history is lacking. I just yeah. know he had a lot of wives. Yeah. All right. Um, where are we? Norfolk. He he'll he's going to gain from Woolsey's fall. Like, yeah, because he's like one of the peers. Remember, Woolsey had him sent back. Oh, okay, so so it's not like he's necessarily in line for anything with no. Woolsey going down, but he's just not being actively mm-hmm. ostracized or whatever. Yeah, his okay. like enemy's gone. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I wrote down wild tiara for that crazy tiara that uh, Anne was wearing. Yeah, that was a heck of a yeah tiara. Yeah, just remind. We have a three-year-old daughter who's really into tiaras, so I have, an eye, I have an, an eye for, for that. tiaras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, Hannah would go crazy. Huh? She would. I don't know. It wasn't blue. She likes blue and purple yeah. Yeah. tiaras. And then if she did have it, she'd probably leave it on the floor and we'd step on it and it would break in a day anyway. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Next, I, I have Bishop Fisher. Yes. What scene? This was when he was testifying? Yeah. Like, are they still in court? Yeah, the court was still going on. At the okay. Point, yeah. Um, he he's I don't like he's out of this world, man. Like. Yeah, I think he's like old, and he's like I'm over it. He just doesn't even. He's just like I don't no. care. Yeah. Like I'm sure they're gonna kill me. I don't care. He's like I served your grandmother. I was best friends with your grandmother. Like you. Can, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not sitting by yeah. it with this crap. Yeah. And just. Yeah, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to heaven sooner or later. I, I'm, I'm going to well have to known. answer, yep. answer for myself. I'm not, I'm not sitting by when this crap's going on. Right, exactly. And, and I'm, <laughs> I think it's safe to assume he, he dies. Yes, <laughs> That's, that would be a safe assumption. That would be a safe assumption. That's easy money right there. <laughs> All right, yeah, poor, poor buddy. Um. And then Wolsey just seems worried in general, like about everything. Yeah. Like at this point, I mean, he's just, I guess he can smell what's coming and, uh, he just knows it's coming from all sides basically. Yeah. Well, he can tell. I mean, I think the signs are all there and he's just like, all right. Yeah. So do you think then Henry and, and Catherine, I guess we're having dinner. I forget the exact scene, but Mm -hmm. they, well, like Henry was just yelling at her. Like, do you think he really would have like treated her like that? Or, I mean, I know it's hard to say. Yeah. It's not like you were, you know, invited to dinner. But um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's, it just seems weird. For, like a queen. I mean, it seems like it'd yeah. be more professional. I guess. 
And I mean, the thing is, at one point, I guess it was after the court, um, you know, he just left Catherine altogether and yeah. stopped seeing her. Um, I guess at this point, they still had this kind of show court to mm-hmm. try to please the court or the, uh, the they people. Had, yeah. Like the, There's yeah. two courts. It's like that homonym show. Um, court or court. Yeah, it, but I think he he probably felt like he would have had to have tried to keep up this appearance of being a good husband because the whole point of his yeah. suit is that he wanted to yeah. be married he to her. Wants but, to, he loves her and yeah. wishes he could be with her. But, but she's his sister and blah, blah, blah. He's such a scumbag. <laughs> yeah. And, but I'm sure there were probably periods. I mean, her her obstinacy did drive him nuts. Uh, yeah. And I can imagine. I mean, especially, you know, him being a king. I mean. Being a reasonable human being, like, yeah. maybe I couldn't imagine him being so upset, And also when, you know, there's so many... Being a power-hungry king of the world, you know, if in you, his mind. And if you look at it from a strictly pragmatic, take all the emotion out of it kind of viewpoint, like, yeah, you can't have children anymore. Yeah, you didn't have I, no, any she, boys. It's, Go live in a nunnery. Go on. Like, like I get it. You're going to still have all your honors. You're going to have everything. It's, it's not like You'll you're have... you're going to win and then suddenly he's going to realize he, he is in love with you and yeah, you're like, going to have a great marriage. Yeah, like what are you fighting marriage. for? Like, like what is, like, and I can understand him being like, like I'm offering you so much. Yeah. Like why don't you just take it, crazy lady? Yeah. Um, and for her it was, you know, we've talked about that. It she's was got, like her honor. She's got and, principles. Yeah. And so... So I can imagine that it probably would have driven him nuts. I, and I can, and I can yeah. see that. Okay, so another question. How long was it? And this is in reference to Anne being so yeah. um, impatient. How, how long was it from when Henry and Anne kind of first met mm-hmm. till this trial happened? By this point, it was like around three years or so. Okay, so th- yeah, so that's a long time. And also, remember, she had been... Uh, contracted earlier as well. So she was already reaching marriageable age um, before, you know, had oh, no, she I, met yeah. Henry. So I, she just, was, I just meant yeah. with, for their relationship. So yeah. they've, they've kind of been seeing each other or whatever you want to call it and for she's about been three years. being told that, yeah, she's been yeah, kind of being strung that We're going to be yeah. married next month. And that was two years ago. And Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I guess it showed Henry... Was he writing music? Uh-huh. Or, like, did did he write? Did he yeah. play? He like he, he did was stuff with uh, music? yeah. He was a, he was actually a fairly competent composer. Like that's how musicologists describe him. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the late fifteen teens, I'll uh, insert the music here. There was a the big hit in Tudor England was "Pastime with Good Company," which Henry wrote. And oh, so the Pastime king had a time with good company. Had a hit song. <laughs> yeah. And there's, you know, albums. I'll add some links in the show notes. There's albums oh, to, um, you know, some of the music that he himself wrote. And it seems so like cute or something like that. Yeah. Like, I mean, that was part of his, his shtick of being this Renaissance yeah, king. He played you know, music and, and he wrote books wrote music and, and he wrote music and huh. he was like this learned, yeah. you know, and also his upbringing because he was the second son and he was destined for the church before uh-huh. Arthur died. He had a, you know, background in this kind of, kind of humanities education mm-hmm. more than having been reared to be a warrior. Yeah. I mean, king he was scholarly and also in like in with religion. And yeah, that. exactly. And so, yeah, he wrote and, and the pastime with good company was the, all the hit of, it the, was the like the number of, one pop song yeah. of Tudor England and <laughs> teens. And, uh, yeah. The top 100 of 1518. <laughs> and coming in at number one for the third year in a row. <laughs> um, yeah, and so the, he was he was writing green sleeves in that scene. And, you know, there's this um, kind of myth. He that wrote that song? That, that's, it's attributed to him, yeah. I, there's, I guess there's, like, some debate about whether or not like it really he wrote, was him. Yeah. Or, okay. yeah. Um, but Anyways. in, yeah, that's, that's kind of that's, what that was hearkening cool. back at. Well, yeah. go him. Yeah. He wasn't only just a wife killer. No, he, and like I say, there's actually, um, Alamiri, I think has a, an album of music that he wrote. And so you can listen, I'll put nice. some links up in the show notes. We'll put up some links for all those yes. rabbit to find out the, the hit song that King Henry wrote. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just loved his outfit, man. That was a crazy outfit. Do you, do you remember it? No, which one? Just it was like this black and white kind of like puffy. Oh. 
just yeah. just wild looking thing and like they they really knew how to you know one of the how things to, how to wear a mean outfit back then i think i might have mentioned this earlier but henry loved having jewels in his coats yeah and jewels so like on a, his hat he was a fashionista he was yeah he was a huge and they actually um they i think i did say this in an earlier episode um that they have recently found um, some of the garments that he is actually that he actually wore, mm-hmm. um, it's very rare to have the actual garments because usually they were repurposed. Even yeah. in wealthy homes, you, yeah. you'd repurpose them because the dyes were so expensive and stuff like that. And um, so when they fell out of fashion, you do something different mm-hmm. with the cloth. So they actually still have um, a hat, I think, uh, and. Yeah, it was like this crazy beret thing that that they have yeah. this this n- yeah, bright this pink. Crazy, it's like this nuts, yeah, kind of hat that he wore. And, and he loved in the portraits of him. You know, you see these jewels that he's just dripping in his mm-hmm. coat, in his clothing, and like jewel encrusted cod pieces and all yeah. this kind of stuff. And you know, it was a he was really into his into his fashion. He was and, into it. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, and also, you know, something sides. else yeah. at this time period was what, as you know, trade and stuff. They were getting all kinds of new colors and dyes and stuff Mm -hmm. that hadn't been available before. Yeah. So they were like starting to really do some experimentation Mm -hmm. with colors and things like that. So it's like brand new stuff. Yeah. It's like ultra cutting edge. You know, when you get cochineal from, from Brazil or wherever cochineal came from, that was like the big thing was all new in the ports of Southampton cochineal. I, I guess they say I cochineal. I don't know what that is. It's like a red dye that you get from this, the eggs of an insect that's like found only in, I forget. It's like, and it's like a really in awesome South color. America somewhere. Yeah. And it's this bright, vibrant red and nice. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So the next is the shocker, the shocker. of the, of the, the, the ruling, if you yes, want to call it that. The non-ruling. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, big answer, drum roll, please. <laughs> you got to go to Rome in October. <laughs> it's <laughs> not a and, bad and time ask the to Pope. see Rome, right? No, but it is when you, when you when got a, king and you, you got an antsy girlfriend yeah. calling you out all the time because you, because you can't get your business done. And you're still having dinner even with your you're wife. The, even though you're the damn king and yeah, right? you're sleeping in bed with her and... <sighs> Oh, not a good scene. No. So when, when was, so this trial that we're, that we're watching that just finished up, like when in the year is that June, July, summer. Okay. So June or July. So July, August, September. So they have to wait like three more months, three, four months or something. Okay. And that's just to go to Rome. No, I know. And then the trial and then, oh, oh, he must be so mad. He, I mean, he must be like. But I'm the damn king, like uh, you know, like the how, king. What the hell? How how am I getting jerked around? I'm the king. Yeah, like it's a new experience for Henry, uh, isn't it? I I think for like any king, that's yeah. not some pushover like country. That man. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and then just my next note. Poor Woolsey. Like he must yeah. be like, damn it, Carpeggio. Like. Yeah. You, do, you don't know what you're doing to me, man. Yeah. So then we see Anne and Henry, um, and she was, you know, hipping him to the, to the, to the Protestant movement going yes. on. And he's like, let me get a load of this book. Yes. Um, do we know, was that, not necessarily like that interaction was, happened, mm-hmm. but do we know that Anne kind of was a Protestantism, like, influence on henry yeah okay so yeah. she she was like she was into that mm-hmm. and there's like stories things. that she that she did introduce him to some of that literature and stuff oh, okay. i don't know exactly yeah, how what's, true what's that is true. somebody who's a tutor court expert would probably see know about letters and things existed but she did she did have those kinds of writings and you know it was part of the plan to say well you know maybe you can look at this and mm-hmm. see whether this might be something you'd be into and we're all the bolins like Protestant people or not necessarily was that just a her thing? I, th- I think they would have leaned Protestant. I don't yeah. know. I would have to look that up. I mean, I think it's hard because it's not like it was also yeah, new it's, and it's also not, you, you kind of couldn't be that open about it. Yeah. And so. Anne was, 
educated. I think for Anne, it wasn't even necessarily so much that she was totally Protestant, she, but she wasn't super Catholic. Yeah. And she was educated, um, at the court of Margaret of Austria and in the French court and the women who were in charge of, there was, there was a lot of, um, desire for reform within the Catholic church in those, with those women where she was educated. And so, um, you know, I think she would have come into contact with those with the, more sort of liberal leaning. Yeah. Not more than necessarily full on Protestant, mm -hmm. but yeah. you know, yeah, but she just did not a total devoted to the Pope. Yeah. And then I think once she saw the Protestantism would help her cause, then yeah, it quickly became, um, her conscience. To, yeah. <laughs> to yeah. It, it became easier. Yeah. So what's Grafton Grafton House? Is that yeah, it was just one of just his another homes. one of the places yeah. kinda like Woolsey had that Hampton Court Hampton or Court, Whitehall and Whitehall. Yeah. So, so they're all just different fancy yeah. And Henry had hundreds And that of and, and those are all those things like we were watching that show on the other night. The Alton Great British Towers Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Those they're like now like stately kind of, homes and stuff. Like that's kind of those things. Yeah. Like just big giant yeah and Jeez. um you know they would have belonged the, they would fall into henry's hands you know that it goes way back like the the mm -hmm. way the land was mm -hmm. um that you know it, there would be manners and then it's like feudalism and there'd be like the person over the manners and the lords and the this level and that level and that level um you know and so some of it would fall into the king's hands if the duke of so-and-so was convicted of treason and then yeah. Henry would get all of his lands yeah. or whatnot. And um, interestingly, like the, a hundred years before in the 15th century, the Earl of Warwick became um, the richest n nobleman who wasn't the king when he inherited through marriage, his wife had inherited, and so he got it something like 200 manners Jeez that he Louise. got. That's crazy. It was this insane. And he already had had land. And of course, you know, at each of those manors, there'd be somebody that yeah, ran it no, and stuff, but sure. he could just roll up anytime yeah, and be like, Hey, be I'm like, here yeah, I'm in my here. house. And, and he collected rents Feed from me. all those different places. <laughs> and, you know, in theory, That's he crazy. then was supposed to be a good Lord to them and, yeah, to, you know, and protect them and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, he he had, and he wasn't even the king, and he had yeah. like I think it was close to two hundred that he That's inherited, wild. and he already had a bunch. Yeah. So how do you keep all that straight? We like, we have a hard time figuring out our house in California <laughs> yeah. with our renter. Yeah, I like, know. I can't even I can't even wrap my head Gosh. around how would you? Yeah, and you're dealing with like messages sent by horses and stuff. Yeah, so Henry had hundreds of places he could just roll up. And all he right, had so his Grafton favorites. House, just another one of the. Yeah. Awesome houses. Yep. Um, and then next, Margaret died a horribly graphic death. Yeah. God, that was something. It's like it was terrible. Hey, I'm a hey, servant. I oh, I'm not feeling too good. Oh, right. Just like, wow, I was really not kind of prepared for that. Exactly. Um, and then kings are kings really not allowed to go to funerals as they, as they said. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was considered, um, to, it, it was considered treason to imagine the death or even talk about the death of a monarch. So if you saw the monarch there, it, it could be treason. So yeah, I'm not sure when that changed. Um, because now people go Kings to funerals and, Queens, and yeah. stuff. Um, but it, at that time, it was still... That was a thing. It was, yeah, they wouldn't go because you couldn't, you couldn't contemplate their mortality their or anything I get like it. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the Thomas More conversation, like I was kind of confused with that. He was talking with Woolsey about, you know, his time. Where did he send him? France? Yeah. Cambria. Came, came, yeah. yeah, and so he sent him to try. Uh, what, what, what can you explain it again? Yeah, it was like it's crazy European foreign policy that yeah. the France was having a meeting with the emperor. The Spanish, and, okay, yeah, so Spanish and so he wanted England to show up to roll up and be like, hey, and the Pope so was all going to be like, they were going to be there. Yeah, so he wanted more to roll up and be like, hey, remember, you guys don't like each other, so don't make peace. Oh, so he, okay, so Woolsey was sending more to, like, blow it all up kind right. of thing. 
and also and remind you like yeah we have a treaty with you france and yeah we had a treaty with you but you did that and then exactly and hey pope like why are you even here because he kidnapped you and sacked yeah. your town and yeah okay and so then so more went yeah and yeah and then that's and, and he didn't and he didn't do that nope Okay, now it's making sense. And, and so, so that's why Woolsey was back. so upset. Yeah. And he's because they're all friends then. And so Moore's kind of being like a jerk here. Yeah, I mean, Moore's it seems kind of like because he's just kind of like, like, oh, yeah, I knew you wanted me to do that, but whatever. I didn't yeah. do it. Ha ha. Sucks yeah. for you. I got, like, I'm I got, happy because I got trade authority. agreements. I got trade agreements. So yeah. I'm still. And people authority is restored in Europe. And so there's hooray. peace. Like, and there's peace. Like, that's the big thing because there's like basically. Yeah. England's at peace with France. France is at peace with Spain. But there's Spain's like that's going to last for like a month, right? Well, of course. <laughs> I mean, at all. But you know, for right that moment. Yes. You know. Yes. All right. Um, they, they could have waited until Henry got his divorce to make some peace. Okay. You know. <laughs> and I think I asked you about this off the air, so I think I remember the answer. But for the benefit of um, everyone, did, did I was wondering if Henry like was the kind of started Protestantism by, like, breaking with the church, or I guess... In England, uh-huh. he... You know, it really was, like, this kind of... It was already going really strong in Germany, and that's like what there we There was saw. already a movement going They on. were talking about, in the German wars, all the mm-hmm. different, you know, hundreds of thousands of people died. That's right. And it was really nasty. And um, and also, like, the people who wrote the books and stuff. Yeah. I mean, they, they all had to have a school of thought to exactly. come from. Exactly. Yeah, okay. and I think there there had been there had been kind of philosophies along the line of Protestantism for a long time in England. There was the Lollards, and there was you know there's always different mm-hmm. kinds of fringe groups. But I guess like, so, sorry, uh, yeah, should, do yeah. I go on? Or? Yeah, no, whatever. No, you ask just me. is was there like a church? I mean, when when he, you know, I said we're jumping ahead a little, but like when he formed the Church of England. Yeah. Was that like the first like kind of official like Protestant church? That was I mean, the first ever non-Catholic church that's what I mean. since pagan times. Yeah. So so he kind of did, I mean, in a way he mm-hmm. quote unquote started Protestantism yeah. if, if you want to say that. Yeah. Okay. But I mean it wasn't like it was his brand new thought out of nowhere. That, right. Okay. Yeah. No, and But it, he he was kind of the first one that charged ahead and was like stuck a you know flag in the ground and said we're we're not catholic <laughs> and he also you know the thing is though he henry that's what kind of makes the church of england so unique kind of like mm-hmm. henry was never fully protestant either mm-hmm. so up until the time he he died even the year he died he had heretics burned at the stake um people who were too protestant yeah. and you know, you could go to, you could be killed for not believing in transubstantiation, that mm-hmm. the um, bread would literally turn into the body of Christ. Like mm-hmm. that was up until Henry's death. So he was never this full on Protestant. Yeah. He just, he wanted to have like the Catholic church, but with him being the head of it. Yeah. He just didn't want to have to answer to the Pope. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, yeah. And then Woolsey shows up and doesn't get a room. I know, like, right? That's like harsh. Yeah. Just like yeah. talk about not subtle. Like yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you thought, you know, in, in case you were wondering where you stood with us, yeah. <laughs> you don't have a room to stay in at the and he's like, at, to the place you invited me to. I mean, it's not like yeah. he just showed up on a on yeah. a cold night. It's like yeah. they invited him to go there. And he's like, I have to change out of my riding clothes. And they're like, Yeah, sorry, yeah, it's, it's, re- it's, it's not our you. it's not our problem. Yeah, bye. I know, God, it man, it, yeah, rough. Um. And I don't know that then, a scene like that exactly happened, but that was Henry style. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then Henry was all nice to Woolsey. Yeah, that was, was like, also his oh, don't his worry, style. don't worry, you know, brother. Like, yeah, 
So, so he would. You were saying that before. He would like build people up. Yeah, and like, like before Cromwell was like two weeks before Cromwell was beheaded, he was given all these titles. Yeah, and that's stuff. right. You told me that. He yeah, was, like, he like made him the Duke of the Earl of Essex, the Duke of Chutney, the Duke of Chutney. What movie is that from? From Robin Hood, the animated. Oh, yeah, right. The Duke. Hannah, we haven't watched that in a while. No, I am um, the Duke of Chutney. The Disney one. That was so yeah. funny. Yeah. Okay, so the Duke of Chutney. Yeah. No, he would. Um, he would do this. <laughs> And a lot of people have speculated, like, why? And there's this theory that his whole idea was that, like, it, he could, is like, what's plausible deniability then? Like, how could I, how could I kill somebody when it's clear that I love them so much? Like, yeah. I love them so much. I just gave them yeah. all these honors. Like, how could I be responsible for, mm-hmm. like, of course they must be guilty. All right. Well, that's something. Yep. And his also, also it was like, he just let other people do his dirty work too. Yeah. He'd like right away and be like, all right, I'm done. So next I'm wondering like what happened to Woolsey? Cause it wasn't very clear. Yeah. Like, and I'm not, I, maybe we'll see in the next episode, but just out of curiosity. Well, I think like, they actually the... turn it into, there was actually two separate incidents that it looks like they merged into one. Oh, okay. So it's not like a straight, straight, yeah. you know, clear. So in 1529, after the whole thing went down, he was stripped yeah. of all of his, all titles of his titles and, and his land, except for the Henry, let him keep his archbishopric of York. Yep. And so Woolsey started to go back to retreat to York and like, he was going to go back and Henry was going to let yeah, him just stay lay there. low. And yeah, exactly. Um, and then in 1530, he was arrested for treason mm-hmm. and that's what that looked like was going yep. on in that. And so that episode in 1529 was actually just a stripping of, yep. Um, yeah. And then in 1530, he was arrested and that we're going to see in the next episode. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I bet. Okay. <laughs> um, and he's, he's, um, on his way to be transported to London for a trial, which I'm sure he would be found guilty at, but we never actually, he never has to go through that because he died on the way. Oh, he got sick and died. A good time to die. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. All right. It saves him a terrible trial. yeah this is a terrible death god yeah. that'd be oh that'd be frustrating all right um norfolk seems quite quite happy with with life sure his niece is about to become the queen he doesn't have he doesn't Woolsey have Woolsey anymore Woolsey anymore got, like he has the good. king's ear and yeah yeah and then a, a, a totally silly question but i'm just wondering like so they were leading, I guess, Woolsey out through court. <laughs> yes. And people were like throwing oranges at him. Yeah. Like, oh, boo you, Woolsey. I throw an orange. Yeah. Like, so my question, did people carry around oranges <laughs> to throw at people? Like, if they just happened to see someone they didn't like, like, so oh, hey, look, with... there's there's whoever. Throw it quick, Harold. Throw an orange at right? him. Right? Oranges came from mm-hmm. Spain. They would have been really expensive. Okay. So I don't think you would have, like, you if imagine... you even had access to an orange... Um, you wouldn't have thrown it. And also like regular people wouldn't have had oranges. Like, yeah. you know, they weren't like, they don't grow in England. Yeah. So, so maybe peasants weren't running down to the farmer's market to grab oranges buying and a, a, throw a, a, a no. bag of oranges just to throw it at heretics. No, no, they might. I, you know, it's possible apples. Um, but I or would like think bread, I don't, I, but the thing is like, you wouldn't like, you wouldn't want to throw anything, you wouldn't want like, to throw dirt. like, I mean, mm. I guess maybe rich people if they had extras, but I, 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 really... I cast an orange at you. <laughs> so this is, um, this is how much I despise. I'm going to throw an orange. I'm going to throw a $50 orange. Yeah. But, um, oh, God. you know, I don't think average people would have wanted to throw. And also things like fruits, that was really valuable. You know, it was like hard to, and it doesn't seem like a very good insult. No. And if you're going to like, throw like pig crap, you yeah. know, yeah, like, that's like insulting. Like an orange, it's like yeah. I think you'd throw like me? rotten apples and like bad yeah. fruit and stuff because that's just nasty. Maybe oranges just show up well on on, on screen. screen. Yeah, so, probably apples. You know, blend if you throw in. dirt, it just it won't even really look like anything. Yeah, and rotten apples will just be kind of brown and not. Yeah. All right, we'll we'll have to get to the bottom of this. It's a history mystery. <laughs> Histories and mysteries. <laughs> okay. Um, so then, like, uh, like almost the last scene, I just felt so bad as the Cromwell gets the letter from Woolsey. Yeah. That, that must be crushing, like, to yeah. anyone to get, you know, have your, like, your, your buddy, like, your, your mentor, your, 
your your guy, you know, your guy. Yeah. Like right, like please do anything for me, and it's like, and you can't. It's like radioactive. Like yeah, you can't. You can't go close to him at that point. Oh, it must be so. It must be so hard. Yeah, I it's think like it having was, to turn your back on like your family. Like I think it was for him, <gasps> but I also think he. You know, I think that he knew that Cromwell would, un- or that Woolsey would understand. Yeah, because I mean, you know, he, Woolsey, he would have to. Woolsey He's was a, a smart, wily. scrappy kind of person too. He would understand, oh. but yeah, I think it would be quite heartbreaking That'd for him. Be rough. That'd be yeah. rough. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the final scene is is Henry yelling at Thomas More for not wanting the chancellorship. Yes. I just, you know, it doesn't seem like a good way to handle it. Like, you be my chancellor, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Like, Well, he really, it, I think he really wanted, more. was really famous in European circles, uh, you know, so. I see. So, so it's a good status. It would have status, some like, credence to, yeah. yeah. It's I not just him getting, I, yeah, him getting a yes man. It's like him getting a, a, a reasonable like, yeah. choice kind of. I think that's why it was so important to him. Like later, we'll see before Moore was beheaded. Like Moore mm. was beheaded because he wouldn't recognize the Boleyn marriage, and I mm. think that was like such an insult to Henry because he was like, you know, you were really important and you really matter, and like you have to accept this. And, and it's like to to me, it shows that it really is a bad thing. You know, it's yeah. like yeah, it's like you know, trusting this person yet not trusting them. Like it's yeah. like oh, I trust your 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 you know, I trust your thinking. But your thinking's wrong in this thing. Like, yeah. Because, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So blind. Yeah. Um, but, of course, he takes it. So Yeah, he does. So Thomas Moore. Because can't say is, no. So Thomas Moore is the new Woolsey, like, in in name. I mean, yeah. maybe not in practice. Yeah, not in practice. Because Woolsey was also the arch... Woolsey was... No, I know. His but, civil job was chancellor, but, but then... He, that, yeah. Okay. In that civil role. But Cromwell eventually kind of fills the gap of the Woolsey in this situation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's those are my questions and questions. comments and Good such. comments. Oh, I'm trying to think what kind of like larger extrapolatory themes there are here. I think it's, I mean, to me, ju- jumping in, you know, this yeah, isn't usually jump. my strong suit. But Let's do it. To me, it just seems like the, the transition. I mean, like that from... From being married to Catherine, having Woolsey, you know, how it was sort of when we get in in, in episode one. Like, mm-hmm. Woolsey's running things. He's kicking Norfolk out. Like, yeah. um, Henry's married to Catherine. And it just seems like like now, it, like this was really the, you know, the, the closing of that chapter of, mm-hmm. of everything. You know, C- Catherine's on the way out. The, the Pope is on the way out. Woolsey's on the way out. Um the old Mo- guard is Moore's out. in, like, Norfolk's back. And things are about to become very complicated for everyday people who are going to be told that their way of worshipping is suddenly illegal. That, that's so... Talk about annoying. It's like, come on, just do whatever you got to do. Get your divorce, but leave, leave like, us out of it. Like, you know what's really crazy is that if you were born in, say, 1520, and you grew up worshipping Catholic... Uh-huh. And then in 1547, Henry dies. And then you have Edward VI, who's totally Protestant. Okay, so first, if you're born in 1520, all Catholic. And then suddenly you get into this weird kind of Catholic, but with Henry as the head of the church. But you can't, still can't be Protestant. Yeah. And then Edward comes along, and you're totally Protestant. And that's you're like in, an adult by this point of 27, 28 yeah. years old. Suddenly totally Protestant. Then Edward dies, and you've got Mary. So by this point, you're like 35. Oh, yeah. Okay. And soon after, yeah, yeah 1555, yeah. whatever. You've, um, you've got Mary coming in, 1553, 53. And, and so she's suddenly, Catholic. and she's Catholic. So you're now like 30, 33 <laughs> it's years like, old, and it's back to like damn minds, totally people. the way you worshiped five, the way you worshiped yeah. last year, totally illegal. Now you have to back, be back to being Catholic. The way you were when you were a kid. Yeah. Before and then, Henry's thing. Yes. And then 1558, Elizabeth comes. And, and she's Protestant. She's Protestant. Oh my gosh! These so, people. With, if you were born in 1520, you would have one, two post Henry, three Edward, four Mary, five Elizabeth, five. It's like if 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 anyone asks you like you know what religion you are, you're like I I really I'm I don't English. know like just what whatever is not going to get me gonna, killed. Yeah, like, exactly. You tell me. Yeah. Are, are we Protestant today? Are yeah. we Catholic? Yeah. I don't know. And that's like 
it then within a person's <laughs> lifetime. I mean, that's like if you're born oh, in 1520 yeah. to 1558, you'd be yeah. 38. You'd, you'd still be alive then. That's like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, like, and each time you're told that if you do it the other way, you're going to go yeah, to hell. It's like, it's it's like, like your your soul, your eternal damnation. Like God, God's confused. God's seriously <laughs> confused. Like God, what's what is going on up? It's like someone's playing with the light switch or right? whatever. Like, quit playing with the light switch. <laughs> Must have been so confusing for yeah. people. Um, anyway, okay, so that's our story. Yeah. Um, Any other overriding themes that you saw? I don't. I just it. Yeah, just. Um, no, it's all falling. Apart. It's all falling apart for for Woolsey. Yeah, and Anne's got to act quick too. And that whole idea, she's you know she's not she's getting any younger. The prime of her. Yeah, she's her not life. getting any younger. Nope. Yeah. Um. Cool. So we will be back next week. Thank we you for. Yeah, we will be. Um, we were sick. Now we're not. Yeah, and hope, I, I think our voices will be back to normal next time. Cool. So. Um, yeah. So remember to leave us a rating on iTunes. It would really help and help other people find us. Facebook dot com slash watching the tutors, watching the tutors dot com, all that good stuff. Thank you for listening, and we will talk to you again soon. Yeah, have a great time. <laughs>